Miami Heat have not even made it to their second preseason game yet this season, and injuries are already stacking up and becoming a massive factor. I'm here to break down the massive injury report updates as well as the roster moves made by this Miami Heat squad in the last 48 hours. We're going to break down all of that right now on this episode of Heat Digest, so let's not waste any time and get right to it, breaking down the injury report updates. Now, last season, obviously, we were dealing with injuries day after day, and now the season hasn't even begun. We haven't even made it to our second preseason game as it is tomorrow as we host the New Orleans Pelicans for our second preseason game, but now... It seems like we're not going to have three very key players in this game. Thankfully, it is preseason, so it is not the end of the world, and we still have time to get these players back. But shout out to Anthony Chang on Twitter for posting this saying, From yesterday, an encouraging heat injury update on Tyler Hero and Jaime Jaquez Jr. with a link to his article that we're going to cite in just a second. But he goes on else to say, he will practice again today ahead of tomorrow's preseason game versus the Pelicans. Now, we click on the picture and it takes us to the actual article. And it goes on to say this. Guard Tyler Hero and forward Jaime Jaquez Jr. appear close to making their returns for the Heat after being held out of Monday's red, white, and pink game. An inner squad scrim scrimmage, excuse me, and Tuesday's preseason opener because of strained groins. Now, this is the second time for Jaime Jaquez Jr. in two years having a strained groin or just a groin injury, if you will. Really in the same exact time frame. Obviously, it happened twice for Jaime Jaquez Jr. last season. One of them was right before the season started, basically right in line with this exact timeline that he's on now with this groin injury, but then again later in the season, right before the All-Star break, right when Jaime Jaquez Jr. was really starting to find his stride in this Miami Heat rotation, and he was really starting to play very, very well. Some could argue it was the best basketball he was playing during last season, right before in that stretch right before he did go down with his second groin injury for about a two-week time. But now, again going down with a groin strain and then also Tyler Hero a player we have not seen at least reports of being of going down to a groin injury in the past is now dealing with an injury likewise as Hawkes for the first time and again it's very interesting it seems like we're going to have these players back before the start of the season but again a significant injury if you do not give the extra time that is needed to heal and that leads us to our next quote in this article where it goes on to say and I quote the extra days helped end of quote he head coach Eric Spolstra said of Tyler Hero and Hawkes after Friday's practice going on again to say and I quote but they've been working quiet a bit behind the scenes so I wasn't surprised they were able to do some work today and that's the end of the quote so I will say a massive piece of just something you can be optimistic about when it comes down to the health of Tyler Hero and Jaime Jaquez Jr. is the fact that, yes, they are dealing with groin injuries. Yes, they may be significant at this time, but they are not to the point where they cannot work through them. They can't do other mobility work. They can't get their stretching in. They can't get their lifting in without irritating the groin. It seems like just certain activities are ones they cannot do rather than just being bedridden, if you will, using that type of language, in the sense of they just flat out can't do much athletically, let alone moving due to the groin injury, when there is cases that your groin injuries can be significant and painful enough where athletes literally can't do much on them. It seems like these guys are still putting the work in behind the scenes, allowing themselves to recover and really get back to the ball or back to the basketball court sooner than later, which is always great to see. The injury isn't significant as well as these guys are working their ass off in order to make a return for this Miami Heat organization, which is, again, what we love to see. Now, where did this happen for Tyler Hero? He goes on to say, Hero said his minor groin injury stemmed from the work he put in during training camp last week in the Bahamas, saying, and I quote, I was pretty sore after training camp, Hero said, ran a lot, and I was sore, so I needed a couple days, I'm back. So, didn't really mention how he actually injured the groin or if it was something that or if it was actually diagnosed that it was a groin injury just seems like he ran a lot and his legs could be tight could be tight around the midsection and again obviously he's not just assuming it's a groin injury but again it's it, he didn't tear the groin he didn't strain his groin in any way at least based off of this report just a very sore in or very sore area which again i think we'll be able to get by it won't be too significant now this is for Hawkes. he goes on to say and i quote I had felt some tightness in my groin, and I left the training. I let the training staff know. Hawkes said it became really tight and became a little painful at one point, and they decided to just hold me out for a little bit, just to make, 
it just to make not make it any worse than it already was. I trust in their decision and their process that they go through. Just trusting in everything they need to get me back on the court. I'm feeling great right now. So again, a little bit more information and detail behind Hakez's injury, but compared to Tyler Heroes. But again, this is the third time in now a year and a half for Jaime Hakez Jr. dealing with a groin injury. So he knows it's significant when he has a groin injury. He knows how significant it should it can be, I should say, in the sense that it can put him out for weeks at a time. If you do not take care of it, if you just try to work through it and you think light of it, it can really, really be painful. It can really immobilize you to a certain degree. And because of that, and because Hawkes has already gone through something like this, it seems like he has been very smart. He puts his health in the hands of the training staff. Hey, what is the best route here to take? What should I do? What should I not do? And he's going based off their terms. And really, it seems like it's working as he goes on to say, again, I'm feeling great right now. After he mentioned earlier that it started to get painful after being extremely, extremely tight in the groin area. So again, he's made improvements from where it started, it seems like. And this is always good to hear as he's getting closer to returning for this Miami Heat team. And hopefully he can be there from the jump. Game one of 82 for this Miami Heat team and be a significant factor. Like we know he's going to, like he, we know he's going to be like he was last year for this Miami Heat squad. It just comes down to the availability for Jaime Jaquez Jr. Because again, when we saw him play for consistent periods of time last season, he was very, very good until again, he had to go out for a long period of time. I believe it was almost two weeks, if not three weeks, just before the All-Star break when Jaime Jaquez Jr. went down with his second groin injury, the second one being more significant than the first that he suffered. Again, right around the same timeline as now, just before the NBA season starting. But now we move on to our third injury report update, where it goes on to say, the only player on the Miami Heat's roster who was limited in Friday's practice was guard Josh Richardson, who continues to rehabilitate from right shoulder surgery that he underwent in March. The Heat also practiced Saturday ahead of Sunday's exhibition game against the Pelicans. Obviously, Josh Richardson went down with a dislocated right shoulder against the Boston Celtics in February, late January, when they were playing against one another. It was a heated matchup. That's the game we didn't have Butler. That's the game Rozier went down with a neck injury. Duncan got in a scuffle with Jalen Brown. He apparently hurt his shoulder slash elbow. There was a lot going on in that game. Josh Richardson was obviously one of the players who went down with a dislocated right shoulder. I believe it was because he was diving on the ground for a loose ball. So shout out to Josh Richardson for always hustling and just putting it all out on the line. But again, it did cost us in the sense that he did not play the rest of the year. And hopefully he will be ready to go by the start of the season because he obviously is not a star player for this Miami Heat team, but he's a hell of a, a damn good role player in the sense that he plays great defense. He can hit open threes and he's very, very athletic and really can do a lot for this Miami Heat team. So again, hope to see... Josh Richardson make a return here pretty soon for this Miami Heat squad. Now we'll get on to the roster moves made for this Miami Heat team. They are just G League affiliate uh, team moves, but again, they are going to affect this Miami Heat team going forward due to the fact that we are still in the preseason and we are going to watch these players play on Exhibition 10 contracts. Now, Anthony goes on to say on Thursday night, the Heat announced it waived guard Caleb Daniels from his Exhibition 10 contract to make room to sign center Warren Washington to an Exhibition 10 deal. So again, we broke down Exhibition 10 contracts before in the past. Basically, a minimum contract that is not guaranteed for basically a tryout. If you make the tryout, you get the guaranteed or the non-guaranteed money of, I believe it's half of a million dollars or less than that. It's not a lot of money. It's very, very small compared to what regular contracts in the NBA are slated to be. And again, it is basically for a tryout. That is what the contract is for. And if you don't make that tryout, you're gone. And if you do make it, you're not even really on the team because you cannot play more than half of the regular season games and be on an Exhibition 10 contract. So again, they would play the majority of the season in the G League for the Sky Force. And again, we'll move on. Both Daniels and Washington are expected to transition to the Heat's G League affiliate, the Sky Force, this season. The Heat also still currently has guards Isaiah Stevens and Zion Pullen signed to Exhibit 10 contracts, which will likely lead to them playing for the Sky Force this season as well. Again, they would have to be very, very bad and just have to be flat out cut by this Miami Heat team to at least not make the Sky Force and play for them this season. So last thing we'll close out on. He goes on to say, and I quote, we're encouraged by all the work that he put in this summer, Spolster said, of Washington. He got a lot better. He really did. His role. I think he's going to have 
the, the, I think he, that he's going to have, he worked on that. He has wrapped his mind around that he has to be a defensive big and an energy guy on the glass, run the floor, setting screens, get people open, be that ver vertical spacer, all those things he did extremely well. And that's exactly what we want to hear from Spolster, talking about a young center. Young defensive center is what we need. Be able to clean the glass, be able to be a defensive presence, set good screens, roll off of those screens, whether it's popping or rolling to the basket. Do it effectively. Do it with a mentality that you're looking for the basketball, and things will really look good for us. And again, I love the help at center. Always do, always will, because Bam Adebayo and Kalel Ware are great. But again, you need a lot of size, especially if you want to make deep playoff runs and compete with all the other talent in the East and really even in the West for that matter. So again, that'll be it for this episode of Heat Digest. A lot of new information. Hakez and Hero on the way back from groin injuries. Hakez seems a little bit more significant than Tyler Heroes. And Josh Richardson is hopefully to be back by the start of the season after recovering from his right dislocated shoulder that he had oper in operation in, in March. And finally... Uh, we had one player cut in Caleb Daniels and one player signed in Warren Washington to exhibit 10 deals. Again, a lot of information. Hope you guys love all of it, and I hope you guys see you guys on the next episode of Heat Digest.